Hi guys, welcome to the next section, Prepared Data for Modeling. Now, we move on to the first video of this section that deals with checking for duplicates, missing observations, and outliers. Until you've fully tested the data and proven it worthy of your time, you should neither trust it nor use it. We'll show you how to deal with duplicates, missing observations, and outliers. Duplicates are observations that appear as distinct rows in your data set, but which, upon closer inspection, look the same. That is, if you looked at them side by side, all the features in these two rows would have exactly the same values. On the other hand, if your data has some form of an ID to distinguish between records, then what might initially appear as a duplicate may not be. Sometimes, systems fail and produce erroneous IDs. In such a situation, you need to either check whether the same ID is a real duplicate, or you need to come up with a new ID system. Let's consider an example. As you can see, we have several issues here. We have two rows with IDs equal to 3, and they are exactly the same. Rows with IDs 1 and 4 are the same. The only thing that's different is their IDs, so we can safely assume that they are the same person. We have two rows with IDs equal to 5, but that seems to be a recording issue, as they do not seem to be the same person. This is a very easy data set with only seven rows. What do you do when you have millions of observations? The first thing I normally do is to check if I have any duplicates. I compared the counts of the full data set with the one that I got after running a distinct method. Here's what you get back for our data frame. If these two numbers differ, then you know you have what I like to call pure duplicates, rows that are exact copies of each other. We can drop these rows by using the drop duplicates method. Our data set will then look like this when we run the dfshow method. We dropped one of the rows with ID 3. Now let's check whether there are any duplicates in the data irrespective of ID. We can quickly repeat what we have done earlier, but using only columns other than the ID column. We should see one more row that is a duplicate. We can still use the drop duplicates, but we will add the subset parameter that specifies only the columns other than the ID column. The subset parameter instructs the drop duplicates method to look for duplicated rows using only the columns specified via the subset parameter. In this example, we will drop the duplicated records with the same weight, height, age, and gender, but not ID. Running the df.show, we get the cleaner dataset as we drop the row with ID equals to 1 since it was identical to the record with ID equals to 4. Now that we know that there are no full rows duplicated, or any identical rows differing only by ID, let's check if there are any duplicated IDs. To calculate the total and distinct number of IDs in one step, we can use the AGG method. Here's the output that we will get. We first import all the functions from the PySpark.SQL module. Next, we use the count and count distinct to respectively calculate the number of rows and the number of distinct IDs in our data frame. The alias method allows us to specify a friendly name to the returned column. As you can see, we have five rows in total, but only four distinct IDs. Since we've already dropped all the duplicates, we can safely assume that this might just be a fluke in our ID data. So, we will give each row a unique ID. This output table is produced. Monotononically increasing ID method gives each record a unique and increasing ID. According to the documentation, as long as your data is put into less than roughly 1 billion partitions with less than 8 billion records in each, the ID is guaranteed to be unique. Now, we will move to missing observation. You will frequently encounter data sets with blanks in them. The missing values can happen for a variety of reasons systems failure, people error, Data schema changes, just to name a few. The simplest way to deal with missing values, if your data can afford it, is to drop the whole observation when any missing value is found. You have to be careful not to drop too many, depending on the distribution of the missing values across your data set. It might severely affect the usability of your data set. If, after dropping the rows, I end up with a very small data set, or find that the reduction in data size is more than 50%, I start checking my data to see what features have the most holes in them and perhaps exclude those altogether. If a feature has most of its values missing from a modeling point of view, it is fairly useless. 
The other way to deal with the observations with missing values is to impute some values in place of those nuns. Given the type of your data, you have several options to choose from. If your data is a discrete Boolean, you can turn it into a categorical variable by adding a third category that is missing. If your data is already categorical, you can simply extend the number of levels and hold the missing category as well. If you're dealing with ordinal or numerical data, you can impute either mean, median, or some other predefined value. Let us consider a similar example to the one we presented previously. In our example, we deal with a number of missing values categories. The row with ID 3 has only one useful piece of information, that is the height, which has value 5.2. The row with ID 6 has only one missing value, that is the age. The income column, since it's a very personal thing to disclose, has most of its values missing. The weight and gender columns have only one missing value each. The age column has two missing values. To find the number of missing observations per row, we can use this code snippet. This output is produced. It tells us that, for example, the row with ID 3 has four missing observations, as we observed earlier. Let's see what values are missing so that when we count missing observations in columns, we can decide whether to drop the observation altogether or impute some of the observations. Here's what we get. Let's now check what percentage of missing observations are there in each column. This output is generated. So, we have 14% of missing observations in the weight and gender columns, twice as much in the height column, and almost 72% of missing observations in the income column. Now we know what to do. First, we will drop the income feature, as most of its values are missing. We now see that we do not need to drop the row with ID 3, as the coverage in the weight and age columns has enough observations to calculate the mean and impute it in the place of the missing values. However, if we decide to drop the observations instead, we will use the drop NA method as shown here. Here, we will also use the thresh parameter, which allows us to specify a threshold on the number of missing observations per row that would qualify the row to be dropped. This is useful if you have a data set with tens or hundreds of features and you only want to drop those rows that exceed a certain threshold of missing values. This output is produced. On the other hand, if we want to impute the observations, we can use the fill NA method. This method accepts a single integer, float, or string. All missing values in the whole dataset will then be filled in with that value. We can also pass a dictionary like this. This has the same limitation in that you can only pass an integer, float, or string. If we want to impute a mean, median, or other calculated value, we need to first calculate the value, create a dictionary with such values, and then pass it to the fill NA method. Here's how we do it. This table is produced. We omitted the gender column as one cannot calculate a mean of categorical variable, obviously. We used a double conversion here. Taking the output of the AGG method, we first convert it into a pandas data frame and then once more to a dictionary. The records parameter to the dict method of pandas instructs it to create this dictionary. Since we cannot calculate the average, we added the missing category to the dictionary for the gender feature. Even though the mean of the age column is 40.40 .40, when imputed, the type of the df miss no income dot age column was preserved. It is still an integer. Now, let's see outliers. Outliers are those observations that deviate significantly from the distribution of the rest of your sample. The definitions of significance vary, but in the most general form, you can accept that there are no outliers if all the values are roughly within the Q minus 1.5 IQR and Q3 plus 1.5 IQR range, where IQR is the interquartile range. The IQR is defined as difference between the upper and lower quartiles, that is, the 75th percentile and 25th percentile, respectively. Let's again consider a simple example. Now, we use the definition we outlined previously to flag the outliers. First, we will calculate the lower and upper cutoff points for each feature. We will use the approx quantile method. The first parameter specified is the name of the column. The second parameter can either be a number between 0 or 1, where 0 0.5 means to calculated medium or a list, 
and the third parameter specifies the acceptable level of an error for each metric. If set to zero, it will calculate an exact value for the metric, but it can be really expensive to do so. The bounds dictionary holds the lower and upper bounds for each feature. It will return this result. Let's now use it to flag our outliers. It will produce this table. We have two outliers in the weight feature and two in the age feature. By now, you should know how to extract these, but here is a side snippet that lists the values significantly differing from the rest of the distribution. This is the output.